continuing on to chapter 16, displaying and annotating pipe networks, we'll be hitting the trail end of our learning in Civil 3D as we go into the last couple chapters. This one will bring it home to how to show, display, give Civil 3D styles, and annotate the last couple chapters of pipe networks we learned about in chapter 14 and 15. Once again, we'll go into our files. Let's get all the files we want. There's eight of them on uncompleted and there's eight more completed to check your work against. Beginning with the start of the chapter on two seven or excuse me 317, we will talk about what makes pipe networks even more special in how we show them. So as we've learned in previous chapters with whether it was alignments, profiles, section views, and now pipe networks, we design, we've been learning in a certain order of designing them first to share information and various things. And that's only half the battles we, we've continually been learning that the design can't necessarily be reviewed or constructed just by that alone. The next part of it is to show it a certain way using civil 3D styles and various other annotative objects and also to uh, add what we call, as we've been doing in all these chapters, after we learn how to design and make them and edit them, annotating them with civil 3D labels and various other things. So we're going to be doing that with pipes and structures, fitting, fittings and appurtenances between pipe networks of the regular gravity style and also the pressure style of pipe network, excuse me, pipe network as well. We're going to learn about using those labels and performing tables from them, which are also dynamic as we've used in the past. We've done parcel tables. We've done label tables for line and curves. We've done tables for alignment entities, for profiles, and pipe networks are no different. They can take the dynamicness and leverage it all the way from the civil 3D object, all the way through the labels to the tables to show data. So we're gonna start by learning about the styles, manipulating them in pipe networks, which work pretty well. And they're more complicated than most of the styles you've learned. They have a little more in the background going on that have a variety of options how they display. They go a little deeper, I would say, to show how pipes might look or could look, or all the options under the sun, basically, for that. Then we're going to learn how about annotating them in the plan view, which is its own world, from the top-down view, as we've been working in mostly in this class. And then we're going to learn about annotating them with Civil 3D styles, also in the profile view, which we have been doing a lot in this class, not as much as plan view, but think about when we annotated profiles and profile views and sections and section views. Similar to that, just doing the respect with respect to pipe networks. Then we're going to learn about making tables from those said labels, which are the last the last step of dynamic start to stop in the chain of civil 3D styles relating to pipe networks. So moving through chapter 16, we have different styles two structures, fittings, and appurtenances, the items basically between our pipes. There's different types of them, and we're going to be switching and bopping through those. We have AutoCAD blocks, which can, which can be very universal, very customizable, very to your own creativity, to your company standards, designs, colors, styles, pl plot options, whatever you can think of within reason, but they have more customiz customizability. Next to civil to 3D shapes, which are essentially somewhat similar, but it's basically just a outline boundary of that of that 3D model. In this case, is a little curb grate that lets in stormwater. It's an accurate representation spatially in the X Y Z in a way. Okay, but it doesn't show the interior detail. This is generally a very accurate way of how one would show a 3D shape of this given structure for the civil 3D style of it. Block would be similar. It could be, it could be shown in the profile view in the Z dimension and the elevation dimension, same, same. And they have different appearances that could be between them. One would be the solid, how it would be shown in the 3D model. This one would just be the boundary 
similar to the solid and and this one would be the block with these are not different enough that really gives you what what the heck's going on here this block could be very customizable to something very different than these two these two generally look a lot more like the block you can go a lot of ways with it's the same with fittings and appurtenances this would just show a t fitting which a lot i've seen a lot of styles of companies that look just simple like this it's just a half cross this one in the middle would be a catalog defined block a very detailed block that would look very detailed in the plan the top view here or very detailed in a 3d view which we'll see in our chapter examples as we go into some of these on civil 3d A lot of them in the lower right corner viewport as this opens up. We'll go in here slowly. Um, once again, if you get uncomfortable with the speed of your CAD, which very well you will, just feel free to go to the view tab and turn it to one viewport or as a trick I actually learned about not long ago, you can do that through this plus sign in the upper corner here as well. So yeah, just how they look in the 3D view, that is one option. So we're gonna get into that a bit, which this is in 3D Southwest isometric shaded rendering. If I continue on too, we'll be learning uh, different aspects about labeling in the plan view here, between structures and pipes and the profile view here, between structures and pipes and fittings and appurtenances and they also appear in the 3D view. So that's just a kind of quick preview of what's to come. If I go back to the book, these are different, just different iterations of similar things. I've seen some companies with these kind of styles that are more detailed, some with these, I would call them schematic type of designs. This would be pretty common looking T or two pipes perpendicular into each other, basically fitting. Or you could have a Y where there, it's more of an angle, a Y shape, or a cross where two pipes have a four-way intersection, uh, or an elbow fitting, various other things. So let's get into 16.1 and start messing with the different display of structure Civil 3D styles. And you can already get kind of get a preview of we have what they look in, like in plan view here. We have what they look like if we hover over them. I'm in Civil 3D 2022, mind you. And this is some of this stuff is very consistent from Civil 3D, oh, I would say 2014 all the way to 2022. But there's been some slight modifications. If I hover here, I can see they are selected in 3D view here to the right, to my lower right viewport. So I'm going to leave these open just to show the differences. The first thing we're going to do is just to click... Uh, if you don't, if you're not going right to here, it's it's in this location on the bottom of Jordan Court here. We're going to pick this structure, this pipe structure. We can see it's pipe structure, and we're going to go up to the ribbon, which is one way we can go to structure properties or style. Change its properties or style. The pipe has a different spot right here, but we're selecting a structure, so we're going to go to structure properties. We can also right click and go other ways, but we'll start with this. We're going to change its style to CSSWR outline. We'll hit OK. That changed its physical style to more of one that uses the object. That's going to, in this style, it's physically giving its actual barrel size of that structure. So some styles, you're going to have more of a symbolic size showing more symbology that's not necessarily accurate to its real life size. Some of these styles like this one would be the intent is to show its actual size. So it depends on your company's needs, standards. What do you want to show? Some of them, you don't care about size. You just want to show what's there. It all depends on what you're getting after and how you want to show how accurate. There's not necessarily a right or a wrong way, but there's sometimes when one might be used over the other. So if I click on I hit escape, make sure I just have one thing in my selection set. I show I have a now a drainage uh, in the drainage uh, pipe manhole or a drainage structure manhole. Just have that selected. I'll right click this time. I'm going to go to structure properties this way instead of the ribbon. And now I'm going to change this to CSTRM, which is basically storm uh, shorthand. 
and we're going to go to storm outline here. Let's say OK. And we can see right away, which is on page 321, we have a conflict going on here. So these are shown in the object format style, which we have ready and we switch to ready use, use for us. We show we have a conflict. These would physically be touching and they could not interact if because this is their actual size, we would have an overlap. Not a great scenario there. So it would help us show where we have actual conflicts of the physical location of these two pipe network structures. It's a helpful example of maybe how different styles, Civil 3D styles, would help you. Now let's go up here to the tippy top of Jordan Court, where it meets existing Emerson Road. And we're going to go where the new water line ties into the existing water line, which is right here. So if I pick on this pipe, for example, you can check some of that. This is shown as a water existing style that just tells me this is an existing model pressure pipe network. I showed you an example of, of a pr uh, different style that had an existing running into a new proposed from a real life job the other week. And here is my proposed line coming into it. They look very sim similar in symbology. But our goal is to go in here a little deeper and to zoom in so we can see the fittings of the pressure pipe network. It's going to have us pick all three of them. We pick one. That's one fitting. I'm going to keep it going. It's a little slow going. Pick a second. This selection, selection set is just going to accumulate. I'm just going to keep left data clicking. And I have three selected, three fittings. And these can have an overall theme. Remember, we were on that pay picture on this page. We were kind of saying, hey, they could have this overall theme. How do they generally look, these fittings? We're going to mess with that right now. And you could totally go over here and change the style as well, a third way. And we, we could change it here as well to water 3D instead of just regular water schematic here. We can change it this way. So now they're more of a 3D catalog part fitting. We could have also done the right click. And that is not an option. We could go to fitting properties here as well. This would let us do one at a time. So we could do one at a time this way. Or we could have all three selected like this and change them all at once here. So th this says style varies because yeah, obviously there's two different styles going on. Let's make them all water 3D. And there we go. So the book talks more about the, civil the power of styles with pipe networks. They can get fairly complex or not complex as much as you want. Like this one would show in a plan view as a, as a slice cross section, which could be accurate in its location to the alignment. It would slice and show the hatching of concrete. You can get pretty specific and you can get different renderings in the, in the 3D view in one of your isometric views to show different renderings. You can get pretty involved or not involved, just depending. Uh, I have a few jobs I'll show you from industry that I've used different styles. Manholes are a pretty common one, whether it's storm sewer, various things like that. They're very common structures. If I just do a simple Google search, I can see I bring up sewer manhole. I got all these manhole lids, common looking manhole lids. This would be you know, what you would see in a plan view, a two foot manhole steel lid. And in a profile view, you'd see something a little more like this. Uh, this is more 3D rendering, rendering but you, your barrel, your, your precast concrete with rungs and steps, this is getting pretty detailed, but it would be maybe a concentric or eccentric type of uh, barrel, it could be a rectangular, it could be a circular you, with no taper. It just depends. So you can get very detailed with these in various methods to show them in the plan view or how you show them from the top view, the plan view from the top or the profile view from the, the vertical. So it just depends what you're after. We'll go back to our drawing file again. And we're going to go to the northeast of Jordan Court here to where it meets Emerson Road. And we're going to pick this structure. And we're going to mess with the properties on this as well. We'll go up to the properties window here, which I like to sync here. 
I like to leave it docked to the right. And I'm going to change this wrong one. Styles up here on this one. We'll change it to C storm manhole symbol plan and profile. Long word. And that'll change it there, which you see it changed it here. This is a different type of completely different style for this application for the plant, the profile view mainly. One of my least favorite things about AutoCAD is when I have to undo and redo, you, they accumulate as so many commands, but this was essentially the goal of the per first part of this chapter. Let's go into the next, into doing the same thing with pipes. So pipe styles, you can show them different ways, not, you know, there's, they're pipes. How many things could you possibly change in a pipe? Uh, more than you think, but they don't, you don't have to quite get, get as many options going. Pipe's a pipe. It's round generally, not always. It could be egg-shaped. It could be oval. You could have square pipes even, but a lot of them are round. And for the sake of keeping it quick, I'm going to stick to mostly that. But you can show them with various things. You can show them as one line in the middle with the center line. You can show them with the inside and the outside. You can show hatching in between like this. This is kind of showing the whole kitchen sink in a way. Can show various different things and you can have different colors and layers and plot styles within each of these entities just like the structures you could do various things like that i'm not going to get too much into detail in this you can have obviously this line here at the end closing it off or not you can have this end be open on each end of the pipe and you can have crossing pipes which basically is showing a pipe crossing in the perpendicular and i'll show you a drawing with one right now this would be an example of a pipe crossing. It was drawn in with a civil 3D style, or these could be done manually. This is, a, I think, a three to one vertical exaggeration. Here would be a little crossing. It would just show as an oval shape. This is an interesting different print, but it would be an ovalish shape showing where a pipe would cross, say perpendicular to this pipe network structure, or excuse me, pipe in this case, that would be following somewhat parallel with the alignment profile. You could have styles that show pipes in a crossing function, more perpendicular. So let's go back to the chapter 16.25. It's going to take us right here to the intersection of, of Emer or Madison and Logan. And we're going to come in here to pick some of these pipes. So here we have a crossing where the sanitary sewer pipe crosses with the storm sewer pipe which happens quite often when we design things. It's oftentimes a large constraint we got to work around or deal with. And they're also selected here in the 3D view, okay? And also, these same two pipes, as they, with respect to Logan Court, plan and profile, or uh, excuse me, profile view, which is associated to the alignment. We're getting pretty far along here with things associated between alignments, profiles, and now pipe networks. This runs along here. So let me go back into this viewport. Logan Court is this alignment here. And it starts here at zero plus a pair, goes this way. It also corresponds to it here in the vertical. And now we have pipes running along, along it. So the red ones are the storm pipe. The green ones are the sanitary pipe, sanitary sewer. Green's pretty common for sanitary sewer. Storm, I've seen a variety of colors. And water generally is some shade of blue oftentimes, but that's them running here. So let's just go here into pick the sanitary storm pipe. You can see it's selected in my docked regular AutoCAD properties here, and it's of this variety of style, um, which it's called a civil 3D pipe is what, it, what the civil 3D object is, but we're going to change its style. We're going to go up here to pipe pipe properties, which you could also right click and get to it as well. I'm going to go here and I'm going to change it to CSSWR double line. I'll hit okay. That changes its style to more of a solid thicky line. Okay. And this kind of shows its real size. So you might have the same with a pipe. You might want it to show its actual size, different hatchings inside of it. A lot of times people like to just show them with a singular line type and a one mono type of polyline with a unique line type and color. But every place can be a little different on this. I'm going to hit escape once to clear my selection set of that pipe. We're going to move to the top right viewport where this same alignment is in its profile view state. 
showing information and I'm going to click this pipe, sanitary sewer in the profile view. Just to show you, I have a pipe selected here, which is the same one we had just selected in the plan view. It's a pipe or structure in the profile, so it could be either one. You don't have as many options in the, in the so AutoCAD properties here, but I'm just showing you. I had, have it selected. I'm going to hit Escape. And in this case, I'm going to click the profile view itself, and I'm going to go to Profile View Properties here in the ribbon. You can also get to it by right click of like almost everything. There's usually, you can do both, not always. We're gonna go into the pipe networks area here. So when you have pipe networks overlaid over profile view, a new tab comes up with what's going on with them inside here. So we can manipulate them further that way. And we have different networks showing here. We have the water main pipe network, all of them, filled with fittings and pressure pipes and one appurtenance, one valve. I'm gonna cascade that down. And here we have our Storm 2, Sanitary, Storm 1. We have a lot of pipe networks in here overlaid across this drawing potentially. So all I want to see in this case is the Storm 2 pipe network, which has its pipes and structures. Now remember, a pipe network, just verbatim, is a gravity pipe network. Um, this is a pressure pipe network. You can get a little confused with that. You can generally tell if you see structures, it's a gravity network and no fittings and appurtenances. That would quickly give it away as a pressure pipe network. We simply have one just showing to say, yes, I want to draw this. This has been added, this profile view. Only here, almost nothing else has. So in this storm, I have a structure here showing, a structure here, and a pipe in between. That's basically this clicked yes, this clicked yes, and this clicked yes. Okay, and we can do different styles. We can override them just on this view. I'm going to do that for this pipe. And this is a cool way, actually, honestly, of how this, this view is more set up for the, the sewer. We're going to say, I want to override this to CPROF, which means C, Design, Profile, Storm, Crossing. I'll hit OK. We're going to accept that override. We'll hit, you can hit apply to suck that in without leaving and do more, but we're gonna hit okay because we're done. And you can see this is that crossing pipe I was trying to better explain this. We used a style better here in a way because we want this view, let's say mostly to emphasize this, emphasize this sewer pipe. We just showed this as where it crosses, which is essentially right here. If you're looking in the top down view, this is where that crossing occurs. Let's just say this view for laying out this, we'll just pretend it's for the, store, the, the green pipe, the sanitary sewer. You don't necessarily want this pipe, the storm, to overwhelm it. You just want to show where it crosses. That's the only important thing of that showing. So you show that. You might turn these off too. Uh, I probably would. These would probably not be shown on this view if the, the green pipe was the pipe of interest. But this would be a great way to show the pipe network of this green drain pipe for the stormwater. You just want to show where it crosses. That's the most pertinent thing there. You're mostly showing the design and annotations of this sewer. So that's your purpose of that style, which is pretty cool that they showed that. So we showed you a unique way to go into, you can also go into profile view properties this way instead of the ribbon, that there's a special network area to do some very customizable things inside of profile views with pipe networks here and edit them, change them, manipulate them, override them in various ways here. We just did a couple, touched the surface, but that's pretty cool. Continuing to page 325, we're gonna start annotating all of our networks in the plan view from the top view. And this is a pretty essential task, like all the things we design, having proper and accurate, more, more precisely, annotations is pretty huge. In this case, a lot of them showing what's going on in the vertical and the horizontal, you know, indicating the depth of each pipe, the slopes they run at, minimums, maximums. Those get very important with designing, especially with gravity, having at least the minimums met. That's very important so water flows. To have certain slopes that follow the grade, uh, they, get, they, get very, they need to be very accurate in the plan view 
or the plans we give contractors and builders because they might not build them that accurate, but if we can show them it with a decent level of accuracy, they're going to be better off. So accuracy trickles down. And so if you have bad accuracy at the beginning, only worse accuracy is going to, going to roll downhill. That's generally how plans work as they get built in the real world. Your accuracy rolls downhill that way if you don't have it started up front showing on your plans. So we're going to go to first renaming pipes and structures, which is actually a really good practice. Uh, one thing I noticed as I did a few subdivisions with tons of pipes and structures, if I look at even this one here, I did a water pipe near a national park here, which this this particular job won some awards and it was in the Little Bighorn Battlefield. And it was a very unique site with an uphill water main coming from a well house. As it went up, I had a lot of pipes to name here. There were several as they went and bent, pressure pipe network, horizontal or vertical and horizontal fittings that would bend and manipulate this pipe as it went up to the visitor center. But I had a lot of pipes in here and as I built them and many other jobs like this, they come in as default names. So that's okay, they're all unique, but as you get bigger, more complex developments, it does get kind of critical to name them with some kind of conventional nomenclature or pattern. It just gets harder to see where you're at, what's going on, what's connecting to what, the worse your naming is. So that does get a little difficult in Civil 3D, but there's ways to quickly rename things. Uh, in this case, I renamed all these pipes probably one or two times all at once, uh, whether I grabbed them in the pro uh, plan view or the profile view. So this is kind of showing also a final product of, hey, this, this water line and its plan view and its profile view, these go hand in hand. I have 22 plus a pair here and I have 22 plus a pair here. That's pretty common. You go, at least in America and certain countries that read left to right, you would go left to right. You'd start left and go right. And they tell a story of everything in the pipe you're designing underground in the horizontal and the vertical. And they go hand in hand and they read with each other. If you train your eye from here, you train your eye down, they make sense. So we'll go into 16.3 right now, the file, rename some pipes and structures quickly. We're just gonna quickly go along Jordan Court, our main favorite lovable road here. We're gonna go to station five plus 50. Right here, we have a couple structures and I'm just gonna pick one of them. This is the storm pipe network and these are the structures that intake it. And we, we can see that these structures come in with this kind of common nomenclature. This is pretty typical. They'll just say structure. They'll have a counter after it. So they all have unique names. We're just gonna call this one inlet one, all caps, hyphen zero one. We're gonna hit escape, click the next one. This is a good easy way to do this to start. We'll call this inlet two. We'll go back here, hit escape, click the pipe in between. You can see this pipe has a style, I mean, it has a name, it has a uh, rendering description, various other things inside of it we can see quickly. But we're just gonna change the name right now, not the style. And we're gonna call this STM01. So this, we'll just pretend this is the nomenclature that we're gonna use for our pipes, okay? And it actually wanted me to name them slightly different, which is whatever. Um, I'm gonna hit regen all. Sometimes you gotta kick AutoCAD in the butt and select something and right click and, and say select similar or do something. It sometimes hangs up on the selection set does weird things once in a while. This one uh, really should be called, this one here, when I select it, it really should be called inlet zero one. We're trying to go in, in sequential this way. Uh, I jumped the gun a little on that. Let's just call this one zero two. And this one's zero one. Didn't really like that because I have two of them, so let's call it a placeholder for now. Hit escape. Sometimes you gotta get creative when you have to rename them this way. 
Uh, now this one is inlet zero two. So don't do what I did at the beginning, but this just is kind of showing you how tricky this could be if you do it manually this way. Um, I already named this pipe STM-01. I'm going to click this pipe and name it STM-02. Okay. We're going to move up a little bit. We're going to pick this one. This is actually a manhole structure. <clears throat> We're going to rename it from its default naming to STHM01. Continue on. Yada, yada, yada until we get to the end. It will not let you rename something the same. So if I try to name the 02, it would not let me because I already have a 02. So that's helpful at least. Or it doesn't prompt you to do anything different. This one would be inlet zero let's call it zero four i can always test that zero three works so let's save that i'm going to use my windows key v which accumulates all my clipboard stuff and we're going to hit enter that didn't quite work so let's hit that again let's hit three nope didn't like it Four. There we go. I like using the inlet V or the Windows key V so I can quickly do stuff like this. Sometimes it helps. Depends how long a text, a text string I need to add. This is kind of slow going. So this is just kind of showing you how slow this can be. Um, We'll have better methods soon. I'm just going to keep moving on, even if I skip a couple. This one, STHM02. Let's just call this one STM6. I probably skipped a number, but whatever. And at the end, we're just going to call this last structure its own unique entity. We're going to call it NWALL01. So we're naming this as we go. There's better ways to do this. This is a good intro to naming your pipe network, something that makes sense. If we go into tool space, into prospector, we'll take a look at that said pipe network here, which should be storm one. Yes, you'll see you can rename them here as well. Um, and we did, and, met, and I skipped one, but whatever, that's fine. So you could also go select, or if you don't know where they're at, you have hundreds of pipes here for this one given network, or select or zoom to, or pan to. That can help you isolate where you are in your pipe network quicker using zoom to select. And that's the same with any civil 3D object. So going back to tool space prospector in our pipes here, we're gonna go back to structures like we said, all their values are here, the ones we renamed. There's a couple left, their actual description. And we have various other things where the rule set they follow, what kind of things to check to make sure the design's done right, what style they are, manhole or other structure. That's just a lot of information, good stuff that we can edit all that stuff here too. The description, the name, you can edit several of them with the shift. And now we'll go to the shift right click, but they have to be unique names. So that isn't always ideal. Um, we can change all their styles really quickly. I have them all selected with control picking one at a time. Now I'm going to hold shift and left click. I'm going to change them all at once to a different style. See, they all change. That's pretty handy if you have hundreds of them. I changed three or four at once there. And there we go. We'll go to 16.4 now. Got you involved where they're at in the tool space prospector to do similar edits that we did manually before. So I'm going to go to the fourth file, creating labels in plan view. And our first task here is to create labels in this view for pipe networks. Let's go to a job quick that has some. So I'm talking about some of these labels. 
So labels for these fittings, you might have styles that say station, they're associated with station or elevation and the type of fitting comes in. Uh, this, these, some of these are more manual multi-liters, M liters than anything. And those are fine. You oftentimes will have custom M liters like that. This is just a Northern Easting label showing where this deflection starts. And we'll go to another drawing here, a small little sewer connection with an existing sewer to a proposed sewer connection. We have a few little labels here in plan view. This gives a lot more information on this existing uh, sewer manhole, giving a lot of stuff with its station, its rim elevation, its inverts of the pipes coming in and out. That's pretty common on gravity sewer, showing the rim, the top elevation where the ground meets the top of the structure on before it's buried, and its pipe elevations in and out. So we'll be applying some of these labels, and then in between here for the pipe, we have a certain label showing its diameter, its wall thickness and style, and its material. Um, and next we'll learn about those same corresponding labels in the profile view. Here, here, or here, here, and here. These are dynamic labels that move and change with our Civil 3D design, much like other Civil 3D labels we've learned about. So going back to 16.4, We'll go to the annotate tab here and we could go this way and we'll go to feature of pipe network and we can add labels this way on the entire network or one at a time in either plan or profile view. That's pretty big, but let me, I like personally leaving it open. This is, you can leave it pinned. So if you leave, it stays here and then you hover here and it opens back up. That's fine. Whatever you do on that, we'll go to the feature here pipe network and we'll go to entire pipe network so when we pick one entity it will label the entire network which sometimes you don't want sometimes you do but in this case we do we're going to pick the label pipe label style now this one here and we're going to pick the structure style so we can label both pipes and structures all at once pick this one here and then we're going to go to add this is very similar how you do all labels for civil 3D objects that we've been learning all, all year here, all of these. So we'll pick add. Now you can pick basically any, any part, structure pipe contained in the network. As we get used to, mind your command bar, it tells you what to do. So I'll pick just any random pipe. It'll take a minute. It labeled all my manholes and all my pipes. I'm gonna hit escape. And we're going to learn about editing them here shortly. So we have our dynamic labels made with all the information of its given label style that we selected to start, which is here and here. Now we'll begin editing. So go into the fifth file, editing labels in plan view. And it's about where we left off. We'll go to this left viewport and go to inlet one down here. We'll click on the label itself. We have different grips. This one just has the one grip showing, the green square grip, which will pull the Civil 3D label in its drag state, which gives it a leader and a movement. And there we go. We've seen these grips before. This one resets it. This one moves the leader. This one drags the leader physically, but keeps the leader intact. This one adds vertices to the leader, and so on and so forth. Those are the main ones. We'll do the same thing or inlet two. I mean, this is always something you're going to pick which styles you want for your pipes or your structures. You're going to, you're going to have to do some editing. It's never going to move them to the perfect spots. We'll move that out in a similar fashion. These structure labels have quite a bit going on. Similar to the drawing plan set I did in the city of Missoula. It says the, the name of the structure on top. It's station with respect to the alignment you have going on, which is Jordan Court. It's offset, which is pretty cool. That's nice. That doesn't always isn't always something firms will do. But that says it's to the right, 14.83 feet in decimal to that alignment. It's rim elevation. It's sump elevation, which it's sump. If you look at a manhole, it is basically this bottom area here. So this is the sump. This is the elevation down here where the water would accumulate, basically, or sewage. And then it has its invert in and out. So on a manhole, you have something flowing this way, for example. 
this would be its invert in this elevation right here as it comes in and this well this has one coming from this side too so this is another invert in you can have many pipes coming in usually you have one going out you could have a couple going out and this would be the the out area here generally i was going to say it flew from this flowed from this way to this way but this one has one flowing in one flowing in and one flowing out so two flowing in one flowing out generally yeah you're, you're always gonna have to do some editing whatever style someone a lot of styles or preferences someone's like oh this one's the best that one's the best this one's uh, this that and the other thing no one really knows what they're talking about there they have better ideas and there's some people know more what they're talking about so what i'm getting at is styles can be as different as the things you want the company you work for the purpose you want to show or convey they're hard to sometimes agree on sometimes they have too much information this one's borderlining on that but you might want to see all this stuff so you go tell your blue in the face saying which ones you need in a template or whatever it's just nice to have a certain amount of base options to start with i will say that for sure you don't always know exactly which ones are perfect for every scenario you might have one client that wants to see all this you might have another that wants to see two of these items so all that depends how to make your styles as we've been learning this whole semester that drives styles as much as anything we'll hit escape to clear the selection set of our previously selected pipe network label and we're going to click the pipe label for stm1 here so we just did some of the structures and now we have a pipe so we have a drag uh, grip which drags it along we have a square grip as well which that as you guess We'll pull it in a drag state, similar. I'm going to hit escape to undo that, but I still have it selected. And some of these labels, a lot of Civil 3D labels, you can right click and say edit label style, which edits the style how it appears, but I'm going to go say label properties. You can also get to that here. You can change its prop, uh, which style it is here. But in this case, let's go into label properties, which also opens this so most civil 3d labels don't open up a new dialog box you have to access the labels properties in the typical autocad properties it's a little confusing but we've been noticing that all semester with most civil 3d lab dynamic annotative labels we're simply just going to change this pipe network plan view label to c strm pipe data stacked changes how it appears as you see works for whatever scenario you might use that over another one i've made hundreds of these for different reasons and like i said uses clients wants needs desires whatever whatever what, what have you or maybe my own trying to make the best looking plan set ever you go down a rabbit hole sometimes really perfecting these and getting them dialed across the board so you, one of your goals is to have a plan set that looks uniform every time so you're not chasing these things down um, they might seem trivial but when you have a plan set with hundreds and thousands of annotations and everything these stay dynamic they add up significantly in the time it takes to get them to look the same so styles are important we'll do the same thing with this label we're going to use a square grip to pull it out in its drag state to clean it up clean up our text conflicts make it look neater more legible someone can build it someone can read it interpret it do what we need to do let's do a few more of these pipe network labels and this is pretty common you're gonna have to go clean these up put them to where you want in your model space Got to watch your O snaps. They like to have a mind of their own in AutoCAD and just go to anything. Um, sometimes it pays to turn them off for a while. Let's click on some of these, like this one here. Let's change. So I had two things selected. Let's change this one, like I did earlier, to do the stack text. And let's drag it off like this. Let's continue prettying up these labels of our pipe structures. Here we go. This one looks okay. This one here, for example, on pipe STM05, I'm going to click it, 
I'm gonna go to flip label, or you can customize each pair of text. You might put something really custom in there, like this pipe was as built in 1972 and has this, that, and the other thing. Very job specific. You go into the text here, you reselect it, you might add this. Here, whatever note you can desire, we'll flip the label here. You can also do that by right clicking and getting to some of that. You can reset it to its original state. You can flip it, you can edit the, add the text. You can clear the text that I added by overriding it back. So there we go. Basically, just continue on and keep tidying these up to a more desirable fashion using your, your drag states and your grips and your styles and your various edits for plan view labels. We'll move on to page three, 331 and we're going to start adding some labels in profile view now. So let's go into our sixth drawing, creating labels in profile view. So profile view is just as important as we've been learning as I showed you some of those plan sets. If not, sometimes with pipe networks, it's even more important because it, gravity pipe networks depend so much on elevation to be effective, to work, to flow, to be built right. So these labels are just as important that correspond directly with our plan view labels. So in this case, this one is following from this direction, going this way to the south, this way to the south. And same here, this, this is the stations here on this profile view. It starts at zero plus a pair, right in here. And this one starts close to zero plus a pair. This is about where it shows. We're gonna be showing this, going this direction, this direction. This is a little bit fictitious. You know, as I said, this kind of shoots against our alignment going this way. It doesn't go parallel here. It goes kind of perpendicular. As I select it here, you can see in the 3D view, where it's at there, move on, structure. But sometimes these views get a little skewed and you need to split them in multiple views to communicate your design better. But in this case, we're gonna go with, with their instructions. So we'll go back to the annotate tab, pick on the tag to add labels. We'll go this time back to, once again, pipe network, not pressure pipe network. We're gonna go to single part, profile this time. We're going to just add one label to one part in the profile one at a time. We're going to select CPROF STORM pipe data, in this case, the style. Now for the structure, CPROF STORM structure data above. So you, these also, making all these styles as a designer or CAD manager, these you can get pretty strategic how these cascade, numeric, alpha numeric, how they are ordered. Do they have the same nomenclature? Can someone figure it out that comes in here? That can be tough. We're gonna to go to add, we're gonna skip this one. We'll go into this upper right view and we're gonna click the first and the last structures. So we added some detailed profile view labels to those this storm gravity, storm water pipe network. Going back to the add labels dialog box in this case, let's switch this label style to CPROF storm structure data below now. Let's go to add and let's add now re-add, not re-add, but first time add to the second and third structures. So we can see the slight difference on how these styles show. Basically, we have one that flips it, the structure name on this side above, and these ones flip it on this side below all the data. So they're very similar to just mirror images of each other. These labels can get very intensive to get just right. Um, it's nice to get them dialed in to what you want and what you use most frequently because they can be a headache if they don't work right. So let's go back into add again let's add labels to these pipes now i'll just pick one at a time since we're just doing one pipe at a time and i added this pipe label style cprofs strms c profile storm basically pipe data and there we go we have the length of the pipe and the horizontal the diameter of this pipe this part 
which is a pipe. The type of pipe, RCP, reinforced concrete pipe is what that means generally. And the, the slope of it, this is a pretty shallow slope. These are some pretty critical pieces of data, this one especially. Same with here, we have very critical pieces of data where the inverts come in and out. The sump and the rim, remember the rim's up here, and the sump is down here on the bottom of the structure. So here's some labeling. And as you can see in some of these plans, I just labeled this simple little view of this sewer main extension in, in the city I live in. We put some labels, this is a little off, it should be uh, more pinned here, but it's showing a quick cover dimension, AutoCAD dimension, and some multi-leaders, I always accommodate these, but these are my Civil 3D labels that are dynamic to my Civil 3D objects pipe structures, and this one to pipe, a gra uh, pipe network, but a pipe. Uh, so this is a gravity sewer. So I have this label here. This is at a pretty minimum slope, very shallow, and some very critical things going on here that connect to the existing sewer. So here's a final, basically a final product plan set pr printed off in PDF of a plan and a profile view of a small little pipe network. Let's go to the seventh file and edit some labels in the profile view. Do some various things. If you look at the picture on 334, it helps us look what we're going. Down here, we're prettying it up. We still have labels of our profile, which is our design profile along the center line of an alignment. We have to kind of mesh and merge and fight conflicts and make it look neat and tidy and display what we want to show, what we want to design, what we want to build, what we want to convey. That's half the goal of any drawing. That's most of the goal in the end after we put the feature in. So let's go into this a little bit in 16.7 to edit some profile view labels. If your views are a little jacked up, let's go to the upper right viewport. We, we can always zoom in. This one, we can zoom back out. I'm gonna hit regen all to take that warning symbol down a peg. It's pretty pretty prominent, it's pretty proud. Um, we'll go there. I'm gonna go to profile view to structure ST, um, STHM Storm Manhole 2, and let's click it. And these aren't in label groups, so they're independent. And when you click one, you edit one at a time, which is kind of nice. They're not like uh, necessarily profile in alignment labels, which come, to, come in dynamic groups. You gotta be careful how you select them. These ones are generally, they, they are independent of each other from other structures, but they're intertied. So if you change this pipe, this label will change its values depending on what you change. So we're just gonna pick this grip here, this label dimension anchor grip. We're gonna move it up. So this label is designed to slide in this dimension, which is awesome because generally we wanna to try to keep it sliding with it without moving left to right. So let's pull it up, for example, just a little bit say right there for now. I'm going to hit escape to clear that label selection in the profile view. Let's click the second structure here, inlet four. Okay. We'll let my contextual ribbon populate and we have label properties and the style of that given label. We're just going to go to label properties, which essentially takes us here. So just get used to this just being the AutoCAD box for most civil 3D labels. And we're going to change the dimension anchoring option here which is this gets a little advanced to below so that changes how it flips and it goes you don't have to change the style all that much you can change quite a bit this says it's fixed it's literally stuck it's probably stuck at elevation zero god forbid i'll say below go back it flipped it let's see what it does when it says graph view top it'll move it to the top of the graph Graph view bottom, you can obviously guess it goes to the profile view bottom, if it allowed me. Didn't quite take. It's having a little bit of problems. Let's let it regenerate. There it goes. Sometimes AutoCAD likes to be a little feisty on regenerating and crashing a lot. A lot of people tell me this and that to prevent it, but you have to have a very deep knowledge of AutoCAD and Civil 3D to stop all crashes, that's for sure. And if you do a variety of designs and maps and large files, you're bound to see some interesting things. So let's keep it at below. Interesting things, meaning 
errors, odd things happening, uh, drawings kind of freaking out, certain things crashing. It's just inevitable the more complex and the more designing you do in a variety of ways and a variety of projects. Basically, just get comfortable being uncomfortable once in a while with certain things not going right and uh, save a lot. Also, have a system of backup files. Those are a few things I've done a lot to save my butt just in case you don't know what's going to uh, freak out. Have autosave on, too, is another helpful one. I generally keep mine at every 10 minutes to back save things pretty frequently. So now I'm going to click the square grip on the top of the label, and you can move it around this way. And I'm going to click the ortho mode here to keep it only going in 90 degree north, south, east, west. And all we're doing here is we're going to say, hey, it did most of the work. Um, but in this case, well, I did below the structure. So really, you've got to pick this one. It's a little misleading in the text of the book, but close enough. You pick this. I have my ortho mode already turned on, keeping it in the east, west, north, south only, or 90 degrees. It's just saying, let's move it so there's no text conflict. It has to go here below all the action. We'll repeat the same steps for this label. I'll hit escape to clear that selection set. Let me pick this. Let me go here to change its dimension anchor option to below. Let me pick this grip, move it a little bit just to show I can, not that I needed to. And that's it. We're just showing some various edits to these profile view, pipe network profile view labels. And they all have their own little grips. You know, this, these ones slide in this direction. Um, they get a little bit sticky. You might have some area where it's really tight. Like this is getting there. Like this wording almost can't fit in here. Um, you might have to get creative if it couldn't. Maybe you should make a new style. Maybe you just go in here and you do something like this. You edit the text just temporarily just to get the job done quick. You might come in here and hit return and make your own really quick just to get that done. A lot of little things you can do. These also um, have a grip here, which we didn't get into. They can pull in this direction. So there might be times we have too many pieces of text. You have to pull in this direction to move it off. Sometimes that requires doing some creative things like drawing a polyline just to uh, give the final tie to this. You might have to do a match property to make it a similar layer and whatnot, but all kinds of little things. They're not fully automatic, but they're pretty close. And that's it for that. We're going to end the chapter with the eighth file. We're going to make some pipe network tables, which are the last step of dynamicness that take all of the civil 3D objects and pipe networks we made and make table information out of them. Tables being in the tabular Excel type format. So let's go back to our friend, the annotate ribbon. And then we'll go back to the labels and tables. We'll pick the icon of the tag there. We're going to go back to actually... We're not going to do these. My mistake there, hit X. We're going to go to the tables. So very similar tables for everything. We'll go to pipe network. And we're going to go do add structure. So we're going to do a table for structures. And for the style here, as we get the st structure table creation dialog box, we'll pick C, S, S, W, R, structure, and pipe data. And we'll make sure the network selected is sanitary. That's critical. We're going to say, hey, which network do I want to make a table of? You can say multiple. You can pick multiple ones between networks here with Civil 3D 2022. I'm going to say that works fine. If you have hundreds of structures, you might want to say, hey, I want 100 rows. So it comes in one big column, um, tables per stack. We don't need to worry about that right now. Let's just hit OK. And let's just pick a point somewhere in this left viewport. doesn't really matter much where. And we're looking here. And we have it inserted. So we have all of our structure names, the details of it, which inside it has which alignment it's associated with, which station and offset it is from that set alignment. It's rim elevation, it's sump elevation. This is a lot of good information to quickly clean up a drawing maybe when you don't want to annotate it all over the place in this fashion. Um, 
for example, we only have annotations for our storm here, but we're going to annotate in the tabular table format for our sewer because this could get very busy and, and kind of wild with all these annotations. So there's a couple ways. This one was more in the tabular format. It has all the information similar to this. It just shows it in a different way. And once again, it's all dynamic. When you make any edits to these civil 3D objects, all these labels change. And same being said with the tables, all the information in the tables change, depending on what changes and edits you made. But with that being said, let's do it the, the other way we just learned. We'll go back to the annotate tab, pick our labels tag. We'll go to pipe network. We'll say entire network plan. We're going to pick our styles for sewer in this case and sewer name only for the pipes and the plan view. And in this case, for structures, we'll say name only as well, for the sewer type. And this is just for plan view, so the top view. This is not for profile. It's one of the biggest differences with labeling pipe networks. You've got to distinguish if you're going to label this type or this type. So you got to do one at a time, which is fair. They have different purposes, and they, they function a lot differently, the labels. So let's hit Add. And now just pick any one, one of the pieces of the sanitary, um, sanitary pipe network. I added my labels for my structures, pipe. It just shows the names, that's all. These are pretty simple ones. And that's pretty typical for plan view. You might just want to show a naming. So there we go. That's the end of chapter 16. Now we know a lot more about editing styles of civil 3D pipe networks and pressure pipe networks and also labeling them.